hello, people who grew up with strict parents, what were some shits they did? Tankadin, Tonkadin said, I had a ton. I think the most unreasonable was that we, my siblings and I, weren't allowed to know where we were going during car rides. If we'd ask, we were told business and had to figure it out where we were going, to the store, etc. Only after we arrived at our destination. This lasted until I moved out. Another was asking permission to use the bathroom every time. This didn't last as long. Jeez, that is some third world country shit right there, if I do say so myself. Um, someone else says, My best friend growing up had the thing about not asking where we were going or really any question at all. Her parents didn't like being asked questions, so you had to avoid it at all costs. Nice. You, were, you also weren't allowed to drink with your meals. Okay. It was strange because we always get drinks with our food in my family and school and whatnot. It's hard for me to eat without drinking because my mouth and throat gets dry and and hurt. And I would basically be choking, but you couldn't get a drink of water until after you were finished eating if you said you were done to get if you said you were done to get something to drink and then wanted more food, they would say, No, you had your drink, now you can't eat any more. It was very odd. I really don't understand it. I avoided meals there as much as possible. Edit. For those who keep bringing it up, no, their family was not weirdly religious, and no, it was not about weight or health. Everyone was healthy and of normal weight. They just didn't allow you to drink with their food. I never heard them explain why. Also, we were not little kids who couldn't balance eating and drinking at the same time. We were like 12 and her older siblings were 14 to 17 and this went on for years. Last time I ate there, I was 18 and that was still the rule. Ugh, damn son. I mean, as far as the other one with asking for bathrooms, I mean, I I tell my friends and stuff like, hey, I'm gonna go to the bathroom just so that they know why I'm not there anymore instead of them like turning around and I'm just gone. But otherwise, having to ask for permission is uh kind of weird. I get that you want to know where your kids are, but again, it's the whole asking for permission is kind of creepy. No sneezing or yawning between 12.30pm and 4.30pm. Hmm, someone says, if true, then we can safely assume your parents were mental. <laughs> Nicely said. Uh, looks like it. Vozami says, my mom wouldn't let me have any female friends growing up. Joke's on her, I'm gay. <laughs> ah, that's nice. Meto the world. I was, am, not allowed to do the following. Use the washing machine, wash the dishes, pull the weeds, vacuum outside of my room. I must ask to use the vacu bleh, vacuum. I can't cook a meal. I can't have the remote. I get instructed on how to use the microwave that I've been using for years, and if I ask where we are going... I get told out, and I have to dress in jeans, a shirt, and running shoes no matter how hot because he doesn't like shorts, and no jacket no matter how cold. Ugh. Yeah, parents suck. Do, do, do. Sarcastic Gamer says, my, parent, my wife's parents are still strict and it's annoying whenever we visit. You're not allowed to sleep in even if you're... If you're off work and you can't lounge around in your pajamas and have to be fully dressed in the morning again even if you don't work, shit doesn't make sense. Edit. The majority of people replying have been asking why we put up with it. Good question. Well, we barely stay over. Eh. It's usually just holidays, so it's not like it's all the time. Ah, yes. <laughs> It was more prevalent when my wife still lived there when we first met. We just go along with it to stay on their good side as they help us out when they need it. At least they help out. I know some people where their families are fucking useless and they always have to save their family, yet they keep them around because they feel obligated that since you share the same DNA that you just have to put up with their shit and they don't act like family at all. I have left my family years ago. Best decision ever. Lol Howe says, no matter how right you are, even if they are flat out wrong, they're always going to correct you just because they're, they're your parents. Source, Filipino parents. Do, do, do. Someone says, thought this was only a Korean parents thing. I guess it's just an Asian parents thing. No, it's not, fuckers. 
I fucking hate when people are like, oh, it must be this specific race or gender. No. Everybody has the ability to be fucking nonsensical assholes. It happens. Stop trying to, like, put order to it. There's no order with insanity. <laughs> Gus Eaton01 says, Strict parents create sneaky kids. <laughs> Not wrong. Mr. Gecko the Salamander says, I'm sure plenty of you can relate. No sleepovers, no matter what age you are. And if you want to hang out, where, when, who, blah, 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 blah. Okay, yeah, 20 questions. I get it. My siblings had to eat 10 olives every day at dinner. I am the youngest, so I guess my dad forgot about that rule. Hmm. Come in. What good does that do? That's just cruel. Alameo. But olives are great, question mark? Ugh. Yeah, okay. Likely Lurking says, even if I'm wrong, I'm right. Ah, uh, yes, I am all too familiar with that crap. This caused a lot of confusion on my part and rage on theirs. I got my head knocked through a cabinet door for eating a grape wrong and even more trouble when I cried. Aww. She's in short, yes, I still see my parents regularly. I'm at their house with their daughter. Yes, I've always known they were kind of fucked off in the brain. Never heard that phrase before. I've learned to take no shit, though. My husband has been there since we were 16, and I attribute my take to no shitness to him. Someone asked the important question, how do you eat a grape wrong? She said, I peeled the skin off before eating the guts. Chole Cow says, where do I start? Pretty sure my dad was a psychopath. There were unwritten rules with him he'd make up on the spot, so my siblings and I never messed with him. I didn't ask for anything because you wouldn't get it, and he beat the shit out of you for daring to ask him. That meant no school trips, no gifts, no birthdays, basically none of the other stuff the kids had. Did you guys ever get... Allow- or, yeah, well, allowances, too. I never got allowances. But did you get, ever get, like, a a quarter or anything for losing a tooth? I got nothing. And then my friend up the street would get $50 a tooth. Just from her dad. But that might have been because his mom and dad were divorced. Or her mom and dad were divorced. So it was one of those, like, who loves you more competitions. Hmm. Huh. The Real Robert says, In the 1970s, my extremely conservative Mormon mother would take the masks from... Oh, God, my throat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, would take the masks out from the grocery store, plastic Halloween costumes, those wretched ones with the thin elastic string to hold them on, and widen the eye holes with scissors as much as she could without destroying the mask. When we asked why this was necessary, she informed us that in our church, we don't like masks because it was a group of masked men who murdered Brother Joseph Smith. So we want to be able to see your face clearly enough, even with your masks on. Totally pointless and ineffectual dogmatism. Except that whatever that it was... Whatever that it was never... Fucking shit. Except that whatever that it was, never any kind of LDS dogma. Okay, so I wasn't going crazy. It was just fucking weird. really wish people would utilize commas. They're, like, magical, honestly. Because it's like when you're talking. You, you always have pauses. So, like, pause when you're writing shit, too. I hate walls of text. And I had one friend who would just write a whole paragraph of one sentence no commas either thanks for asking lipstick and pixie dust says when i was in fifth grade i wrote some stuff in my diary about masturbating <gasps> and like a month later my mom went through all my stuff Ooh, i love when my mom did that too she would randomly go in my room tear it apart i'd always get in trouble for something and then i'd have to clean up the mess and be grounded for whatever amount she felt like that day Ugh, i know this so anyway, she found that diary entry. She picks me up from school and won't talk to me. I get home. My door was removed from my room. That diary entry was taped on the wall. And I was threatened with a belt if I didn't answer all of her invasive questions. Fucked up. Let's load more comments. People agree. Way to give a kid a complex about their sexuality. I agree. If I was the common Reddit... In your situation, I would assert my dominance and masturbate. 
in full view during dinner. Oh, wow, I'm sure you would. <laughs> God, can't even still masturbate, right? <laughs> Pleb. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next one. Unequal Raccoon says, I have a ton. One was that I had I always had to give a 24-hour notice if I wasn't going to be home for dinner any night of the week because, you know, dinner plans are never made the day of. This lasted until I moved out when I was 19. I thought it, that would get better, but it actually became worse. My sister and I go to dinner to our parents every Sunday, and now they need 72 hours notice if we're not going to be there. Jesus Christ, are you kidding me? Ugh. Jesus fuck. Sorry. <laughs> also had a 10 p.m. curfew every day of the week until I moved out. Sleeping in was never a thing. 9 a.m. wake up call otherwise. Parents had sensors on our doors. Ew. So they could tell if we left our rooms in the night. Ew. Cameras covering every inch of the outside. Every inch of outside, we weren't allowed to use the bathrooms after midnight. My stepmother came storming out of her room one night when I was in the bathroom at 2.30 a.m. because, you know, sometimes you wake up and need to go, and I was sick of peeing in a bottle because of that rule. Oh, She stormed out and confronted me and looked like she was about to hit me. I said, I fucking dare you, <laughs> as I was ready to hit her back. Bless your heart. Oh my god edit. At one point, they cut off the power to our rooms at 10 p.m. every single night. This lasted less than a month, but it still happened. Ugh. Oh my god. It fucking blows, because we grow up in this thinking that's how every household is, so we don't know any better to report it. Oh my god. My parents love to, uh, threaten to give me away for adoption, because we lived right across from one of those troubled youth buildings where it was people, well, kids who didn't have parents and all that, and just, they loved doing that for no reason, because I didn't act out much. My only issue were bad grades here and there, which my mom would just take away my Sonic the Hedgehog games. So yeah, someone goes, there were fucking cameras in your house? Um, OP says, just sensors on the doors and on our rooms inside. Cameras outside, plus sensors if movement was detected in one of the cameras outside. Barf. What happens if you or your sister don't give the 72-hour warning of not showing up? OP says, they get super petty and they won't invite us for dinner for a couple of weeks, or they'll give us a long explanation of why those 72 hours are so important to them. Burgers take that time to thaw, right? <laughs> Random life pro tip, sometimes if you gotta thaw your meat, I mean, sometimes it's bad because it might cook it a bit, but I would do dishes and I'd just have the meat in a bag and the warm water would run on it a little bit. And I would thaw it within, you know, 30 minutes to kneading the meat, so use it sparingly, I guess. <laughs> Not the best. Ugh. Do, do, do. Okay, people saying, oh, you shouldn't go there. Agreed. If parents want to be visited, they shouldn't make a total pain to do so. If it was anyone else but my parents, I'd do this. What sacred position do parents hold which allows them to shrug off all requirements for decent and civil behavior? This is what I've been preaching. Do, do, do. More people. Why do you even let them treat you like that? If you were an adult, 72 hours notice, I would tell them to either change that or never go to their house again. They don't respect you. Yep. It sucks, because uh, people want to keep their family around, because it does indeed suck not having a family. <laughs> uh, what are you going to do? I don't got any friends either. <laughs> when the fuck does this fucking thing end? Damn son. Here we go. Lobster boy says, if my father yelled upstairs to me, I wasn't allowed to yell back what? Instead, I would have to come down to the stairs to see what he wanted, even if it was just to tell me something or ask a question. Yeah, I ended up doing this just because I was so sick of yelling back at my mom, and she would try to, like, hold a conversation with me when I was not only on 
another level of the house, but on the other side of the house as well. So it's just, uh, not a good idea. Like, she was so fucking lazy. We called her recliner her throne because she was just this slug of a person. <laughs> just, just would stay there. Someone else says, my parents did this. Yelling is rude. They said I could never adequately explain the hi hypocrisy to them. Yeah, go figure. Someone else says, same with my parents. My mom was yelling one day, and my little brother, obviously distressed, yelled back at her to stop yelling, and she goes, I'm not yelling, I'm projecting. Ooh, ooh, ooh so good. And now us kids have launched a full-on rebellion against our hi parents' hypocrisy, countering, stop yelling with, we're just projecting. Ha, sh -sh bam. <laughs> that's, that's how it goes. Then the issue of them calling yelling our names because we're supposed to come when our names are called. So now instead of calling mom, dad, insert reason for calling them here, it's just mom, dad, then silence, followed by another mom, dad, if they don't respond. They're coming off the hypocritical behavior slowly, but it's working. And when you have two big brothers heading up the operation, 19 me, 18 my brother, it's quite hard to quell the movement. Huh. Decoy1 says, I had a friend who wasn't allowed to sit on the couch, no matter the circumstances. That was the first time I realized something was really wrong in his house. The kicker? It was a crappy couch, so it's not like he was going to ruin it. Edit. To the folks looking for logic, you'll find none. No, the parents weren't saving the couch for company. No, the kids didn't have a history of damaging the couch. No, the kids weren't little troublemakers. They were surprisingly well-behaved teens. Surprising because of how they were raised. This is about control, not logic. Domestic abuse is always about exerting control. Don't let anyone try to convince you otherwise. Even after adding that note about child abuse, I'm still getting jokes about how my friend... Must be a dog. Thanks, Reddit. <laughs> Ooh, we got a big in here. Marblue says, I was interested in learning about Wicca because I was young and in high school, early 2000s, when Harry Potter was happening and all of that stuff. My mom and stepdad found out by reading an email I sent to my cousin. It was the, sum it was the summer and they freaked out. Took everything. I couldn't read. I couldn't listen to music. I couldn't watch TV or watch movies with my family. I couldn't hang out with my friends. Couldn't talk to my cousin anymore. Basically, anything that might bring me pleasure was taken. They made me do chores all day. Would go on family outings without me. Oh my god. Soon I became a shell of a person. I was just going to kill myself. I wanted to and I just was scared of death. So I decided not to go through with it. So I turned myself off. They hated it. They weren't getting a rise out of me anymore. Anything they said to me to extending my sentence, I wouldn't react to. Since their narcissism relied on a victim, I wasn't a source anymore. So they extended my grounding even further. They could have told me to pick up dog shit in the backyard with my teeth and I wouldn't have flinched. My stepdad's family, just as terrible, would come over and belittle me as well. I was told to smile, so I'd humor them with a flash of an empty smile for a second and return to my blank expression I had to find solace in. All of this to save me from going to hell. The only thing that saved me that summer was my visitation with my dad. My mom and stepdad tried to paint him in a bad light like... Like our... Like he was the abusive one? Taboo? Even as a kid, I knew my dad didn't make me feel as bad and as empty as they did. I eventually got through it. Years later, about four years ago now, I ended up working a job, unexpectedly, with a girl I used to play with in the neighborhood. I always wondered why she stopped showing up. When I wasn't home or in another part of the house, she came over to the door and asked to play. One of the parents opened the door and told her I didn't want to play with her anymore. I always wondered why she never hung out with me or even talked to me. Even finding this out in a more recent term, I cried and apologized to her. Oh my god, you sweet boy. I would have had a great friendship with a lot of people, but they just wanted to alienate and control me. Unfortunately, this is the tip of the iceberg. I don't, I don't talk to them anymore. Congratulations. 
but I still live in the same city as them and I have a lot of social anxiety because of that. One of my roommates exhibits some of the behavior my parents were so kind as to bestow on me. It's making things difficult to handle. I just want to be happy and live in a healthy environment. It's so fucked up that the biggest monsters in the world are the people closest to you. Holy hell on wheels! I fucking agree with this like a hundred percent. For one, moving away to a new town, like a new state, or just anywhere hours away, it's fucking magical. Please do it. Oh my god. But yeah, just like just like you said, where it's like, ah, the, the biggest monsters are people who are the closest to you, where you expect them to love you and so they mistreat you because they bank on the whole like, oh, you have to love me unconditionally, but I'll treat you like shit forever. Oh boy. <laughs> Slid on said, not my parents, but my best friend's parents were ins insanely strict growing up. When we were preteens and sleepovers were all the rage, if we wanted to have one, we literally lived on the same street. It's just a two minute walk between our parents' houses. We had to plan it at least a month in advance, if not more. Damn, son. Even then, for whatever reason, her parents would only agree to them rarely, so really we'd only get to have like two to three a year. One time I started getting sick at school on Friday and we had planned a sleepover ages ago as usual for that night. I was feeling absolutely awful but tried my best to stay at school because obviously if I went home sick the sleepover would be called off. Made it to lunch and then the teacher called me over and said that I was white as a ghost and burning up and had to go home. My best friend and I were devastated sad day. Yes. Helsing says, I can't be the only one who feels like if I had some of these parents described in the comments, I would have turned out to be a murderer. Some of the stories seem more like abuse than anything else. Just reading the comments gets me all angry. Yep, it's crazy. Like I said, we grow up thinking it's perfectly normal. Uh -huh. Unsweetie says, my dad didn't believe in periods, and when I cried that I needed feminine products... Gave me food stamps to buy them. I was humiliated. Oh, <laughs> Fun story about my dad. <laughs> he's, he's just an enabler. I had to let him go because he enables my egotistical, narcissistic family. So he was one of the things where it's like, fuck, you know, collateral and stuff. Anyway, when I started becoming a woman, um, he was so grossed out and squeamish about it and I could use it to my advantage. But anyway, um, I was bullied heavily in middle school to the point where my anxiety got so bad that if I would eat anything in the morning, I would get severely sick. So I didn't realize that at the time, so I would eat breakfast as every normal human being did, and I would get super sick, and I'd be like, Dad, I feel like I have to throw up. I just, I feel like super shit. And he's like, nope, go to school. Really good. To this day, I still have these really bad problems. <laughs> yeah, anxiety, PTSD, and shit. Fun never ends. Anyway, the funny part is that I would get my monthly lady time, and I would go to him, and I'd be like, Hey, Dad, I got my period. And he'd be like, Whoa, whoa, whoa. And he'd, like, back up with his arms up and be like, Do, do, do you want to stay home from school? You, you can stay home from school. And so, so I'd stay home from school. <laughs> um... For your information, though, I have something called endometriosis, which is when some of the blood is on the outside of my uterus, and so when I bleed during that time, it bleeds onto some of my organs and causes a lot of painful, super painful issues and cysts, and they rupture, which is more pain, and that's just what Jesus decided to give me. Well, anyway, let's move on. So someone says, oh my god, I'm so sorry you had to deal with that. I can't imagine being young and scared about my period and then having being denied feminine products. How the fuck do you not believe in periods? You should have blood all over his furniture that would show him. Oh, nuts. OP actually goes, I actually did, though not on purpose. He accused me of cutting myself and called the police? I was 12. It wasn't too long after that that I was sent to live with my mom, but by then I was already traumatized. That fucker is still crazy. I haven't spoken to him since then. Oh my gosh. Yikers. 
Austin says, I'm a few months away from turning 18 and moving out. I'm still not allowed to sleep in the same room as my phone. <laughs> okay. Let's let's hope it makes you sleep better at least. Ugh. Starshine Drop says, Well, I pretty much couldn't do anything at all. I wasn't even allowed to put posters on my wall. I'm not sure whether it was to protect the wall or some silly other silly reason. All I wanted was to put up a cute poster of a cuddly seal, so I ended up sticking it behind my door. My dad once told me that he was going to ground me due to my poor performance in school, so I simply responded with, Go ahead, ground me. It's not like I'd go anywhere anyway. His dead silence after this was his acknowledgement that he knew I had a point there. My radio was taken away during exams because I had to concentrate. The radio helped me concentrate. <laughs> Uh, ugly laugh. Ugly laugher says, one, don't talk to boys in high school. I rebelled and I did talk to the boys. <laughs> I had my guy friends drop me off a block away every time. It was an innocent friendship. Two, no skirts and shorts above knee length, including gym shorts. Three, no shoulder skin to be revealed. All shirts and tops need to be accommodated by cardigans. Just to clarify, this was mainly about tank tops, sleeveless tops. Four, no kitten heels, a.k.a. hooker shoes, to my parents. Five, go to church four to five times a week. Fuck that one. Jesus doesn't need you to go there to know that you like them. Six, no tattoos and no earrings. Eh. Do, do, do. Eh, some of those are kind of reasonable. Except for the church one, that's way too much. I asked my pastor once, and I'm like, do we need to go to church um, to be religious? And he's like, no, you don't. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Purple Unicorns says, my dad was incredibly strict while I was growing up. Two of his stupidest rules were, one, my brother and I had a bedtime of 9 p.m. until I was a senior in high school. Two, bedtime was so strict that we weren't allowed to get up and use the bathroom after 9 p.m., and three, he made us have a babysitter until I was 14 years old. Of course, he denies ever doing any of those things to this day. Oh, sweet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, I got a nice, nice notification. Mm. Anyway, um, the fuck was I saying? Oh, I, like, never really had a babysitter. My, my awesome grandmother was my babysitter when I was, like, a single digit, but after that we could just stay home, because I, I was a very well-behaved kid, and so were my siblings for the most part, until they became, like, super narcissistic, and fucking bending my spine back to break my neck, because the one got angry at me over God knows fucking what. Yeah, that's not a serial killer or anything. He turned out to be a shit guy, my brother. <laughs> Um, I, I got along with both of my siblings, but after a while I realized it's because I was always walking on eggshells for them, and since I, I was the baby of the family, they would just shit all over me all the time because I'm just the baby. I clearly don't know anything, and I'm clearly not allowed to have a better life in any category ever. I always have to be under them. Ugh, so fucking stupid. <laughs> Sleepy Kitten goes, not me, but a girl I knew wasn't allowed to watch anything Disney. We all thought she grew up in a closet. Yeah, that's pretty weird. Any, any pray tell on that? Doesn't look like it. I wonder if it's because it's like girls falling in love with boys all the time and boys are bad. Anyway, Noisy Russianator says, I was called at a friend's house at 11 p.m. at night. Really? <laughs> <laughs> because I left two t-shirts slung over the chair in my room, first hanging them in my closet. I had to go back to my house, and then I was grounded for a week. Upon getting home, my mother had gone through my entire room and tossed every item out of my dresser. She claimed they were messily put in a dresser. Fun stuff. I, um, I met this boy, and, uh, this was a few years ago when we were in college, and since my mom, mom-in-law-ish, lived close to college, we moved in with her for a year, and I moved all my stuff in, and uh, one day we came back to the house, and everything was unpacked, and to the untrained eye, that seemed like a nice favor, because it's like, oh, look, they helped you move in, oh, how sweet. 
No, it turns out they did that to root through all of my shit to see if there was anything questionable or anything. There was this one time, months later, I I ordered some little figures, some little, not action figures, but just little model figure things from a show I liked, shipped it to the house, eBay, whatever, and the mom-in-law fucking blew up. She fucking lost her shit. And my my guy just went, it's it's just little figurines from this cartoon. And then that completely diffused my mother-in-law. But it's just like, some people really need to calm down. <laughs> Pipe the fuck down, please. So anyway, yeah. Ugh, that woman. <laughs> just the worst thing ever. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, it was, it was very shitty of them to go through all of my things just because they were nosy and wanted to see if I had anything of questionable nature. Turns out I didn't, so fuck you. Oh, and another thing? Since they decided to put everything away how they wanted it, I couldn't find a lot of things I needed for several weeks. So I had to redo everything, so it took way more time, because I had to reorganize everything and then put it all back again. <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> Babubulik says, My life with my parents is unreasonable. I am 22 have to live with them, go to college, and I can't move out because of my diabetes supplies costing too much. That fucking sucks. If I get a job while living with them, I get thrown off their insurance plan. I am not allowed to go over and see my friends, invite people over, drive a car, go outside without them, except to go to class, and they GPS track me, still have a curfew, and they take my stuff away if I don't answer the phone or call them back within five minutes if I missed a call. Basically not even allowed to take a nap or a crap without them knowing. That fucking sucks. Yeah, it definitely sucks when you're not healthy enough to even live on your own because living on your own is already hard enough. But when you're like dying all the time, it's just... <laughs> More O says... Lots, but the most annoying was one hour of electronics a day. My parents always used to take away the cords to the machine when they would leave the house, and so one time my dad went to rip out the cords like usual, but he ended up taking the Nintendo Wii cords instead of the PlayStation ones. I was in awe that he couldn't make the distinction between the device that was black, lit up, and was making noise, and idle, and the idle white machine. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Noctis Fox says was only allowed 45 minutes of computer time daily. If anything happened on the computer, it was the video game's fault. Ooh, I relate to this. Not only the shady links my mom, not the shady links my mom still clicks on 14 years later. <laughs> For those who don't keep up with the other videos, my mom loves loved to uh blame all the issues of the family computer on me and my siblings, where it's like, oh, the keyboard has a virus, but only certain keys, <laughs> which is not right. Or the printer has a virus. It's not that she didn't install the driver or anything. No. But then when she got her own computer, when we were all grown up enough to have our own laptops and computers, she had her own computer, and sure enough, it went to shit. But it's totally not her fault. Oh, no. It's just everything else on the computer. It was just... The computer was just made wrong. <laughs> See, they say, I'm getting a lot of cool responses, but I can understand where my parents were coming from. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Yep. I wasn't allowed to read Harry Potter because I had magic. Oh... Flappy Jack 1, I had to be home by the time the street light that was at our house turned on. If I didn't make it, I would get grounded. Turned out years later that I found out my parents had control of the one light in our yard with a switch in the utility room. It wasn't solar controlled to turn on when the sun went down like the other street lamps in the neighborhood. All right. Ezra Sharp says, I changed my mind. I guess my parents weren't too bad. Edit, wow, went for a hike today without cell service and returned to 9,000 karma and 30 plus comments. Since a couple of people asked what I was going to say, it sounds pretty lame how now compared to the rest of this thread, but I'll explain a few. We weren't allowed to swim in rivers. We were 
rarely allowed to go to friends' house unless the parents knew each other. We weren't allowed to go anywhere on our own until we could drive, which is 18 for me, and just the usual strict parent pushing to get all the A's for grades. Yeah, I mean, again, when you're a kid, you don't realize how horrible bad people are. You don't realize that a lot of nice people are just acting, and they're really psycho, <laughs> sociopaths and all that shit. So, needing needing to know their parents, yeah. If I was a parent, I would like to meet the other parent, please. <laughs> Don't need to be best friends with them, but I just want to try to see if there's any obvious red flags. <laughs> Janae in the closet says, No dragons, no fairies, no trolls, no witches or magic, no holidays, no eating the holiday candies and cupcakes at school or even in those packages, damn. No saying the Pledge of Allegiance, damn. No dating until 18, which was meant for marriage and had to be, and I had to be with a chaperone. No worldly friends either. I guess they mean international. No loving my grandma too much because she wasn't going to paradise with her? Or with us, I could go on. Too long didn't read. My mom was a strict Jehovah's Witness who followed all the rules to a T. Fucking shit. That makes sense, though. Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't even celebrate their own birthdays. I knew someone growing up who was a witness, not by his choice, he had to listen to his parents and just how he couldn't celebrate his own little birthday. That's so sad, because that's like such a huge day for the kid. Plus Christmas, can't celebrate Christmas, great. Ugh. Fucking shit. Nine and Da Huff says, I think it was when I came home from summer break during university and they tried to reimpose their 11pm curfew. That was last summer. <laughs> Gross. Ono551 says, Not a rule as much as such, but my dad could be grumpy and ridiculous and give ridiculous, unreasonable commands. Best example, he was in the kitchen and I walked through with a half-empty glass of water that I didn't want anymore. I emptied the water in the sink, put the glass in the dishwasher, and started to walk away when my dad yelled at me, Wash that drink away. <laughs> I told him it was water and he says, I don't care. I told you to wash it away. I did and mumbled, okay, I'll just wash the water away with water then. And I got a smack for giving cheek smiley face. Oh, and in the 80s when bum bags, fanny packs, were in fashion, he wouldn't let me say bum as he thought it was rude. I had to say bottom bags. So cringy. <laughs> <laughs> like when fart is a bad word in a family. God. JCC Wells says, long list. Dad is a Baptist preacher. A few of the ones I hated most were, could only listen to gospel music. No country, rap, pop, etc. No Harry Potter, witchcraft is of the devil. No staying at a friend's house on Saturdays. Church was on Sunday. No long hair or spiky hair. No spring break trips. Even after I moved out, I had to endure advice and lectures about how going on these trips hurt my testimony. We weren't even drinking. Just wanted to go to the beach. Suryastra says, No lying. Seems reasonable, maybe. But it's not. <laughs> this is going to get buried. But it's important, so I'm going to post it anyways. Well, sorry that I actually care to read, you know? Damn. It wasn't about the rules, it was about the constant interrogations. There weren't so much rules as there were her personality and the things that bugged her and the fact that she was going to interrogate the absolute shit out of us every single day. It's the complete lack of privacy and the total suspicion that makes living with this kind of parent the worst. Not even the whitest of lies or the tiniest of omissions were acceptable. Where were you? Why? When did you get there? When did you leave? Who else was there? What did you do? Why did you do this? Do this blah 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 You get the idea. It's hard to explain, maybe, but there was this Socratic lawyer-type method being applied constantly to invent lies to catch you in, like she was looking for an excuse to backhand you, digging in until her our memories failed to provide total consistency, and when she would ground us or whatever, if she was in a bad mood, she'd scowl around the house until she found something out of place she could scream at us for. This is exactly my mom, by the way. Screaming, lots of screaming. The strict parents, it's often not really about the rules, it's about the respect, which is a dog whistle for total domination of the subordinates in the household. 
if there were rules, there would be times when I was allowed to do what I was doing without suspicion. This did not exist. Every single day on my way home from anywhere, I had to prepare a huge list of answers, try to find where we would dig in and build up the walls, keep stories simple, build big emotional walls. It mostly didn't work. We didn't really have a relationship. We didn't talk about my feelings. Maybe try imagining if every day you had to cross the border twice and board a flight, but the border agents were all your mom. <laughs> yeah, my mom had an issue where she would uh forget shit because she either wouldn't pay attention or she wouldn't care. So she would just fill in what she wanted and believe it enough to where it would be fact. And luckily sometimes my brother would back me up at least. But uh, I know one time I was mowing the lawn and my mom was like, when your father comes home with the pizza, just come in. So my dad came home and I still mowed the lawn for about five minutes because it's like, oh, okay. And my mom ended up screaming at me. I'm sorry if my landlord can be heard mowing the lawn right now. He's immediately next to my house and he's creepy because he looks in. Um, <laughs> so yeah, my mom claimed that she never told me about coming in immediately and just blah blah blah. My brother backed me up. Blah blah blah. Doesn't matter. She's always right and just... Ugh. Balls. Molly Jenkins 69 says, wasn't allowed to sleep in my bra. She would check by running her hand over my back. Anytime I caught doing it, I was automatically grounded. Someone goes, why in the world? It's kind of creepy. Molly just goes, yep, you can't make this stuff up. Ooh, that's fucking weird. Metal Zack goes, one thing I have to deal with right now is my parents saying they own everything I own, even if I bought it with my own money. So I bought an Xbox One when it first came out, and they're like, you have to share it with your brother. So I said, okay, whatever now that I still want to sell my Xbox, they're like, you can't because he still uses it and it's ours because we found the job that you're getting paid at. Damn, that is all one sentence. This isn't the only time this has happened. Yeah, I love when they're like, oh, you're living at my house, so all my r fucking stupid rules are just suddenly logical. <laughs> Actually, I got kicked out of the house once. I was, I think I was 18, but it's obvious that I wasn't ready to be an adult because my parents ignored me my whole life and never taught me how to survive or do anything. So yeah, I was very stunted. Anyway, um, my mom had this stupid little closet in this extra room we had. So it was like an entertainment room, basically. And uh, she stacked all these huge information books in this drywall and shelf and drywall is pretty weak it's very cheap so it's very weak and one day the shelf fell down because there were too many books for too long and she blamed me even though it's all of her books and she's like you need to clean all this up so like I forgot to clean it up or whatever and so she kicked me out because all of her books made that mess and, uh, she didn't put it back up or anything. But yeah, she kicked me out for Easter. So I, I wasn't there for Easter because she's a cunt. <laughs> That's my story. Cactus Pug says, Not my parents, but my friend wasn't allowed to eat too many grapes in one day to avoid them being eaten too quickly. Parents did well enough financially, so it's not like they ha it was to save money. Still not entirely clear why they enforced it. Someone else goes, Diarrhea. Vic Natone says, My dad would play Texas Hold'em online whenever he wasn't working and my mother was. In order to properly keep an eye on my brothers and I, he would order us to sit quietly behind him. No talking, no games, just sit in silence for hours on end while he screamed at the monitor whenever he got a shitty hand. So not really a strict rule, but more of an absurd situation that happened way too often for my own liking. Yeah, that's pretty lazy. Alan13446 says, 59-year-old man here, grew up in a Homer Simpson clone <laughs> as a stepdad, fat, bald, quick to anger, glutton, dim-witted, bad driver, but felt like he was God's gift to humanity. He expected me to be his servant, butler, slave, gardener, laborer, bank, cook, cleaner, driver, dot, dot, dot. My four years with him scarred me so much to that to this day. I keep losing potential girlfriends because they feel I smother them way too much with attention, doing everything for them, not letting them lift a finger. Hmm. 
I relate to this. <laughs> Here's why. Um, my my crappy mother-in-law that I've mentioned before from the past. Um, my boyfriend had to be all of those things. I would call him Cinderella because he was just the slave who was shit on. Just the slave punching bag human. You know, the only reason that family stayed afloat was because of him. Um, so once we started dating, it was like, yeah, it's nice that he's doing nice things for me, but I feel like he's doing it because he's so fucking conditioned to serving people. So it would cause a lot of little arguments, because it's like, I'd rather do things for you, please. Like, I love the, the chivalry. I'm glad it is not of the dead. But it's just one of those things where it's like, in the back of my mind, it's like, well, he's so conditioned to fucking doing all this shit. Blah. But I mean, in the end, at least he's only serving me, instead of serving, like, what, the five of them there was? Fuck. <laughs> um, just creepy enough says, we had to duck when opening the door for strangers just in case they were holding a gun at our head level. Someone goes, that's just proper preparation right there. Someone else goes, but preparation for the shooter, though. Never aim at the head height, since everyone has different heights, but everyone blah 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 blah. That's nice. Whirlwind Jen says, I couldn't watch Will and Grace because it would turn me gay. They took away my TV and everything. I'm a straight female. Hamid the Red Bear says, My mom makes me and my siblings pray even though she never prays. It's messed up. She cooks and cleans, but a lot of her day is spent biting, backbiting about people on the phone and my aunt, with my auntie. Why the fuck should we be devout Muslims when you don't follow the five pillars and you commit sin on a daily basis? And when I point it out, I'm the one who needs to shut up. Total bullshit. The worst human beings are the ones who aren't self-aware. I agree. My mother is the worst human being I have ever met. She plays the victim so she can find a perpetrator. All my parents have taught me is how to conduct myself. That's the only bright side to this. I think I forgot to say, but yeah, my mom would just scowl around the, the house, just skulk. And uh, she would just find shit to be angry about. It's just really annoying. Lilith's that says, one, they're never wrong, two, I'm regularly left in charge of my sister for hours at a time. She isn't allowed to see me as an authority figure, despite the fact she is in kindergarten and I am a high school junior. Three, when I'm out, I have to text or call every 30 minutes to an hour. Four, I'm not allowed to be alone with any male, excluding my father. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> Five, I'm not allowed to discuss any meditation, antidepressant, or medication, sorry. Medication antidepressants with anyone because it makes my parents look bad. Six, I'm not allowed to go to church because my parents say our local churches are corrupt and will turn me into some kind of cultist. Seven, I don't have a curfew. I'm not allowed to go out unless it's with them or my two best friends who usually have their parents with us. I must be home exactly when they tell me to, and that changes sporadically. I don't know. Curfew, curfew's a little weird. I mean, if you are under 18, curfew does make sense if it's like 9 or 10 p.m. because you might be dead. So the parents just want to make sure you're okay. But the shit where it's like 7 p.m. bedtime even though you're a high schooler, that is weird. <laughs> Lou says, I don't know where to start. My mom was super chill. Whatever I was going to do was fine. When I went to my dad's place, total different story. I'm not diagnosed, but I'm pretty sure I am on the dyslexia spectrum somewhere. I'm 34 and still say right when I mean left. I'm also a professional electrical engineer and still don't have any of the multiple... Oh, multiplication. <laughs> multiplication. The tables memorized pretty much proof if you ask me. Anyway, in grade school, I was struggling with the tables in math class, and my dad sat down and wrote out a bunch of multiplication problems in a notebook and had me sit at the table and work them out. When I started struggling, he became visibly and audibly agitated. I relate to this hard. I'll finish. Which my brother and I knew was basically a death sentence. Anyway, after shouting, what is seven times eight? I think that's 56. And at me a handful of times, he backhanded my face so hard that it's 
spiked off the table, leaving imprints of Harley Davidson rings on my right face or left and spiral notebook lines on my left. For scale, I had personally witnessed my beast of a father bench press 400 pounds. Another time was that he asked me to lay a shirt over a chair to avoid it wrinkling. He closed fist blasted me in the back of the skull for doing it wrong. I could go on and on. Okay, I'll stop right there for now. Uh, I was always bad at math. I'm an artist, so I mean that's kind of hand in hand by now, but my parents would sit me down in this like interrogation kind of fucking thing, which already made it stressful. And then of course, I don't understand the math going on, and they're not good at teaching, and they're not good at being compassionate, so they just start yelling at me, which really does not help me retain anything or understand anything, and then they're like, what's this and this? And it's like, I don't know, I don't know. And they're like, no, do it in your head. Well, to this day, I have an absolutely burnt out memory. If I don't write it down, it is never to be remembered. Like, but no, of course they think, you know, clearly it's just me purposely just messing with them or something. Oh, yeah, that was shit. So let's continue. The rule was that you always must perform to his standard, which was impossibly high for a nine-year-old and unstated before you begin a task. Shortly after my 10th birthday, he got pissed about custody and kicked my mom's door in and shot her twice before killing himself? Holy shit! He didn't care that I was watching or what would happen to me after he orphaned me. Reading through these posts, a lot of these are clear-cut cases of child abuse. For those people, you should know that your parents are fucked up. Don't blame yourself for the bullshit that they pulled. I hope that you are all living the lives you want now and are doing what you want when you want. For those still under their parents' thumb, just ride it out. It will get better. No, it will not get better. It doesn't always get better. I was on board with a lot of this, but I hate when people blindly say it will get better because my life has yet to get better. Like, I've thrown away bad people, but my life still fucking sucks. And the only reason why it's air quotes gotten better is because I'm just zoning out. I'm fucking tuning everything out and becoming a shell of a human. Fucking shit. <laughs> Sorry to be a little downer there, but it's the truth. Like, I, I don't have any money. I don't have any friends. Clearly don't have a family because they were shitty human beings. Oh my god. Can't have any kids because my fucking DNA sucks so bad that the worst thing I could do is curse a child with all the shit wrong with me. I have all these health issues I can't even get fixed because I don't have money and I'm not well enough to hold a job and just the shit stains just keep rolling around. Anyway, Fitty Tuck says, I couldn't shower for more than four minutes. My dad would stand outside the door with a timer. He would say, a real man doesn't need longer than two minutes to shower? What a loser. The dad is, just to clarify. ADH Duck says, not allowed a key until I was 18 or 16, can't remember. Yet nobody would be home once I got back from school, so I would spend a lot of time hanging around outside. I would usually be expected to be waiting outside, though. Sometimes it was forgotten. It was forgotten. This was a rule. I could go to the local, so I could go to the local library. Please use commas, guys. Even once I was given a key, I wasn't allowed to stay home alone and had to vacate if they were. Once I lost my keys, turns out my cousin had it in his pocket, but he forgot. My stepdad said we would have to change the locks as someone might have them and rob the house. And when my mom got home, she demanded I go look for the keys again. I refused as I'd spent hours looking and knew I wouldn't be able to find them. She then demanded my phone, so I refused and sat on it. So then she gave me a long, hard look, picked up a box of trinkets on my bookcase, and turned it over while staring at me. After I didn't react, she trashed more of the stuff, stuff in my room until I started to scream and shout at her, swearing. I didn't usually swear at her, but the years of abuse meant I would burst into anger when she started on me, asking her what was wrong with her. While I screamed at her, she stopped and laughed at me incredulously, asking me in a calm voice when was wrong, oh, typo, what was wrong with me. Then she said in a low, threatening voice, 
find your fucking keys and left. So yeah, not the only ridiculous rule they had, but one that sticks out the most. Also, my bag was searched every morning before school and I wasn't allowed to wear soft poofa puffa jackets or jackets without arms. This is my highest rated comment ever. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> Alrighty, I'm gonna keep it there. It's at under 60 minutes. Thank you so much for listening to me ramble. Bye!